Hey everyone, so I just got back from a trip, went to uh, one, two, three, four casinos, uh, was gone for about uh, four to three nights, and uh, turns out I can't use the video from the trip. I can use the audio though. So I'm going to play the audio for you, and for the video we're just going to put in just different outtakes and stuff from some of our other videos so just so you have something to look at uh, so the audio won't make sense with the video but maybe it'll be interesting or maybe not but hopefully you enjoy it if you like the video remember to like the video click on the like button whether you like the video or not please subscribe that way you'll know about new videos that come out and hopefully you'll like some of those all right, everyone, enjoy. So I'm here in uh, my hotel room. Uh, not gonna tell you where because I'm keeping this place a little bit of a secret because this is my home in this neck of the woods. Uh, I play here just enough to get the room comped. So that way I can stay here for free. Why? Because I'm cheap. And this way I cut down on the expenses. I treat this like a business. And so this way, this is one business expense I don't have. I don't have to pay for the room here or meals, things like that. And then I can go and play at places that are very close to here where I don't have to give them my name or ID or anything and I don't obviously get comps there. Here they know who I am so I have to play with a lot of cover. I still manage to win. don't want to get up too much because I don't want to wear out my welcome here. The main thing here is that I want to be able to crash here and then take advantage of the other properties around here. So that was the purpose of today's video, just to kind of get into the business aspect of it a little bit, how you can save some money, how it's okay to get comps sometimes, uh, but just be careful when you do that. Obviously, you're giving up your identity, so you got to make sure that you don't get burned at a place where you're giving up your identity, because then they might share your information with other places, you might end up getting burned at a lot of other places. It'll happen eventually. You'll you're going to get backed off. You're going to get probably barred at one or two places. There's lots of places to play. I did get a question from a viewer about where's the best place to sit at the blackjack table. Well, kind of, that's more of a complicated question than most people probably realize. Okay, the straight answer is, well, if you're counting, you want to sit at third base so you can see all the cards as they come to you and that way you have the most information possible before you decide how you want to play your hand. But casinos know that card counters like card counters like to sit at third base. So that's why I almost never sit at third base. I like to sit if it's a shoe game, I like to sit at first base because then I can see all the cards without having to move my head back and forth. You look really, you know, it looks really obvious when you're sitting there watching all the cards and then they get to your hand and you're like, oh, what do I even have? You know, you're not even paying attention to your hand as much as all the others. So, you know, learn to just kind of move your eyes. But even, with, and, and not only that, you know, wait usually until all the cards are out there, especially if they're side bets and people are making them. It's going to take forever. You know, so you have plenty of time and you want to match them up anyway. You know, small, big, small, big, small, big, and then just count the leftovers. It's way easier that way and faster, and then you're not staring at the table all the time. You can actually look all around and pretend like you're distracted by cocktail waitresses and things. Okay, sometimes I really am distracted. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, first base, I would say, is a good place to sit. If you're counting, you can see all the cards without moving your head around. You do have to act first, you know, so you have less information. Um, if you're playing in a pitch game, 
where people pick up their own cards. Then the middle is a great place to sit where you can, that way you can see other people's cards a little bit. A lot of times you can, other people will show you their hand even though they're not supposed to, especially if you show them yours, they'll, you know, show them yours, they'll show you theirs kind of thing. That kind of works out. So the middle's not a bad place there. I just avoid that, that third base position because that's like the cliche card counter spot to sit. So if you're not counting, it makes absolutely no difference where you sit, okay? So please don't even believe these superstitions that third base controls the cards, you know, because they are the last ones to act so that they affect the next round. Come on, that's all hocus pocus. Okay, we're not practicing voodoo here. We're practicing AP blackjack, all right? This trip has been a fun trip so far. It's been kind of crazy. Um, I've had a couple of cool things that have happened. One cool thing was I was playing pitch and I was getting up to leave. This other player next to me was getting up to leave. I said, ah, if you're leaving, I'm leaving. Well, really the reason I was leaving is that we had this awesome count going. Actually, we had two awesome counts in a row. And so I was betting purple chips, you know. Actually, I was betting like around $800 a hand, hand after hand after hand. Well, that's pretty much my top bet. So now we're starting a new shoe. It's a double deck pitch. I don't really want to bet $800 off the top of the shoe. I could, but I don't really want to. And I don't, you know, I could bet 500 I guess. But even that's a little high, you know, because... I mean, it was, these were great counts. Normally, you know, I only want to bet $100, $75. I, I, I get away with big spreads, by the way. I know a lot of people don't believe that, that you can get away with that big of a spread, but I do. I'm getting up to leave. Well, the guy that said he was leaving, he didn't leave. They deal the cards. I color up my chips. So now I have all purple and yellow chips. And the guy doesn't leave. The cards get dealt out. There's about five people sitting at the table, and I see all their cards, and there's not a big card in there. There's not a face or an ace in the whole thing. And even as they're drawing, they're not drawing any big cards. Okay, this is only double deck. How am I going to walk away from this? So I had the perfect cover to sit back down and play, and I had all these just purple chips and yellows. So I figured, well... I just said, hey, you didn't leave. I thought you were leaving. Well, if you're not leaving, I'm not leaving. You guys don't mind I jump back in? No, no, come on, kid. So I managed to jump into this huge count in double deck, which normally you don't want to belong into double deck. That looks really obvious. But here I was sitting there ready, and and then I was able to just, you know, say, oh, I'll just, I'll just play off the purples and keep the yellows, you know. So I threw a purple chip in there, and I just bet purple the whole rest of the way, $500 a hand. It stayed mildly high the count. All right. Thanks. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope I see you at the tables. May the count be with you. If uh, you guys have questions or suggestions for shows, things you want me to talk about, uh, you can put them in the comments, but better than that, send me an email, darkstarblackjack. 21 at gmail.com. Darkstarblackjack21 at gmail.com. That's probably the best way. And also, we do have a Facebook page, uh, Darkstarblackjack. Check that out. Follow us on there as well. Uh, we have Twitter as well. So follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, and by all means, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can find out about new videos. Let's try this stupid trick one more time. I can't get it.